Do you want to be better in business or life? Do you want to be able to execute and succeed? You must have a positive mindset. You must believe and stay focused. Do you know what it takes? It takes fuel. Welcome to Fuel Your Drive. Welcome to Fuel Your Drive. I'm your host, Joshua. Guys, we got an amazing, amazing episode today. Former NFL receiver who is considered one of the most impactful speakers of this generation. He's got over 11 million followers on Facebook. This man's got over a billion views. You heard me? With a B, a billion. He's the author of The Great Issue. I'm telling you right now, actually, I'm imploring you to get his book. Read it. Something that got me all jacked up when I read this on the internet was he said the only impossibilities that exist are the ones you create. There's nothing you can't overcome. Can I get a hoorah? I love this, and I say this all the time. So are you ready to fuel your drive? Guys, welcome my man, my main man, Trent Shelton. Welcome to the show, my dude. Man, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I'm telling you right now, I don't drink coffee, and you're going to be vibing off this energy because it's going to be like <laughs> unlike anything you've ever witnessed in your life. But listen, let's get right into it, Trent. Listen, I know a lot of people know you, but let's start off with a little history of your story, a little bit of your background. I know people, more people want to know about it. Yeah, man. So grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. I, mean, I was born in Little Rock, but I moved to New Orleans when I was like a few months old. I'm the youngest of three boys. I had both parents in the household. Uh, my parents were married 40 plus years. But, you know, as soon as I was like a kid, like all I wanted to do was play sports. You know, I have two older brothers, so I didn't have really a choice. But I loved the game. So I started playing six years old, playing tackle football. And, you know, baseball, I mean, basketball, track, all these sports. And that carried on. We moved to Texas when I was in seventh grade, Fort Worth, Texas. And if you know anything about Texas, you know, football is like God here. So I still played all sports in high school, but football was my major. I, I love basketball, but I knew I'm not an Allen Iverson at six one, So I knew that was kind of out of reach to make it. So football ended up being the one. Got a scholarship to Baylor. Played five, well, five years there. Red shirt my first year. Graduated speech communication, all Big 12, and I thought I was going to get drafted. Obviously, like a lot of players do, um, it didn't happen. I was projected to get drafted. didn't happen. Signed an un, un reagent deal. I was a high priority free agent. So after the draft, my phone was ringing like crazy. So went to the Colts. Uh, that's the year after they won the Super Bowl. So that was 2007. They won the Super Bowl in 2006. Coach Dungy, Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, like Bob Sanders at the time, all these guys. And outstanding preseason, bro. Like, I mean – Obviously, in the preseason, the, the starters aren't playing much, but I led the team in receiving. As far as rookies in the NFL, I was top in the NFL for rookies. And so I just knew I would make the team. Ended up not making it. They practice squatted me. And, you know, this is kind of where my journey started with the NFL, man. Like, I bought an apartment up there. You know, I'm thinking that I'm on the team. I made it. Ended up getting released. And, you know, it sucks because I just bought a car. You know, when you think that you're somewhere, you know, for the year, it sucks. You know, you buy an apartment. So I drive back home with all my stuff, and it was a lonely drive after you get fired, man. And at that, I tell this story because that's when I first started to teach myself not to face my reality. I stayed inside in my mom's house, in my room, in my mom's house, because I knew it was September if I'm out in the city. You know, Fort Worth is, I mean, it's a big city, but not many people make it to the NFL. So if I know if I'm out in the city, people are going to ask me, like, what you doing home? And so I wanted to avoid that. End up getting re-signed a week later. And, like, that was my whole NFL career, bro. Like, I would be played three different teams, three years, you know, there for a few weeks, release back and forth, back and forth. And I had a low point, bro. Like, it was just, you know, I turned to things that I knew weren't good for me, uh, trying to live that lifestyle. And I was trying to deal with my pain by temporary fulfillment and different things. And, like, that's where my journey started, man. I hit my rock bottom. And rehab time came out of that. Yep. Yeah, but listen, I know you, listen, this is going to be a great podcast. Listen, I know you're going to dig this, but I always say, listen, I was never a big fan of school. It just wasn't for me. You know, my wife hates when I say that, but I have a simple equation. Pain equals growth. Let's talk about that because I know you're going to dig that and I know you're with me on that. So Yeah, bro. I mean, it's everything. You know, there's no stress without struggle. You know, that's just another way to frame it. And you got to think about it. I mean, even if you think about the, the most, I guess, obvious like picture to paint with that is like working out. Right? If you're lifting weight. You don't get strong until it starts to hurt, right? As Muhammad Ali says, yep. you don't start counting the reps until it starts burning. And you have to go through things to actually grow in your life. And so when I look back at my life now, everything that I went through that I thought was bad was really good for my life. 
especially me getting cut from NFL. If I didn't get cut, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. If I wouldn't have lost certain friendships, I wouldn't have certain friends. If I wouldn't have lost certain relationships, I wouldn't have my marriage today. So when you're going through things, you got to think about it like that, right? There's a process. And a lot of times in life, we don't trust that process because we think, oh, things aren't working out. So my life is over. No, things aren't working out. Maybe that thing that you want isn't working out so something can work out better. And that's the thing that I try to preach to people all the time because so many people get down when, you know, things don't go their way. But things have to fail in order for certain things to take place. Man, It's like childbirth. My wife is pregnant right now. Literally, she's like about to pop any moment. And she's going through a lot of pain, man. But I understand that you have to go through that pain, right, in order to birth something beautiful. 100%, man. And congratulations on that. It's exciting. Thank you. You know, it's funny because... I say this all the time and I do a lot of extreme things like, and you could, you could take some of these things from me because they're great. Like cardio. When I do some intense cardio, I duct tape my mouth. I only breathe out of my nose and it's intense. Like, I mean, it's intense. I go in ice baths every day. That is so cold. And you might be familiar with that, but I get them yeah. so cold. I dump like usually like five pounds of ice, usually anywhere from five to 20 pounds of ice, depending on the ice maker. I put it in this barrel and I sit in there, even in the dead winter, I go in there, but there's benefits of it, but I also do it for this, right? The problem is with most people, and I say this all the time, pain is what it's about, but like I talk about this. What is your insight on, look, I'm sure you get that self-talk in your head sometimes, but you know, how do you avoid that? You know, when you were making that drive home, yes, that was another door that was closing, but another door was even better that was going to open. How do you think most people can handle these things? Because I know the average person is not going to sit in a 30 degree ice tub because they're just, I can't do that. You know, or they're not going to push themselves to develop some great abs or whatever it may be because it's too painful. What do you think is really the key for people to understand? Like, you know, you said one thing that's really great. And I like that we say things happen to you, not for you. And when you start thinking of life like that, you're just going to win, you know, and I've had a lot of struggles myself. But how do you kind of work through that? And what do you coach and tell people to do? Because it's really easy to say it's not easy to do. Yeah. So. You seek, like what you were saying, you seek to be uncomfortable, right? In a lot of things by the ice bath or duct taping your mouth, like, because you understand if you get comfortable in being uncomfortable, then growth has to happen, obviously, right? 100%. And the thing that, that I love to tell people is, you know, at the end of the day, what helped me is realizing that life is going to be hard regardless, right? And I always tell people that you can choose your heart, whatever that is for you. So if you choose to settle, if you choose not to go for it, you're going to live an uncomfortable life, like period. And it's an uncomfortable life that doesn't lead you to a comfortable life, right? So you're going to live a life full of complaining. You're going to live a life full of envying somebody else because you're not choosing to put in the work. And there's nothing I can make you. I tell people all the time, I can say it to you all day long. It's like when I tell my son with football, I can preach it to you all day long, but until you want it, until you actually understand the consequences of not giving your all into something, you're going to continue to settle, right? You have to want it. And so, you can choose that heart, right? And you're going to work for somebody else that you don't want to work for. It's like when people complain about their job. Okay, you're complaining about a job that you're choosing to stay at. What are you doing to get yourself out that job? You're complaining about your life. Okay, what are you doing to better your life? You're complaining about your health. Okay, what are you doing to better your health? If you're doing absolutely nothing, then you're going to keep getting those same results. Or you can choose a different heart, right? An uncomfortable path of, like you said, going to run to put yourself, to get yourself in better shape. That sucks. Okay, working on your business, You know, putting an extra, waking up an extra hour earlier because you have a nine to five, you don't have time. So you wake up an extra hour earlier for a whole year to work on your business. Yeah, that's very uncomfortable. It's not fun. But guess what? Over time, it's going to lead you to a comfortable place. So that's the thing that I preach. Choose your heart. Which one is it going to be? You can live a known uncomfortable life for the rest of your life, or you can go through an uncomfortable period to live a more comfortable life. And that choice is on you. If I had a microphone right now, Trent, I'd drop it because that's spot on right there, man. Spot on. You know, it's funny because I was doing, you know, the other day I was in my sauna. I do a sauna a couple of days a week and I went to like this really hot sauna. It's almost like people think I'm twisted when I say these things. I know you're going to get it, but I was like actually so nauseous. I was getting ready to pass out, but I just kept telling myself in my mind, I got four more minutes. I got to stay in here. I got four more minutes. I got four more minutes. And I start putting things in my head, like to start focusing on when you can do that, and then I got out, like, I was like, hell yeah, because I knew no one else was going to do that. That gets me jacked up. Like, I get fired up on that stuff, you know? The problem is, and I know you can relate, is that, look, it's a stat. 75% of people drive to work every day committing spiritual suicide. They hate their job. They're miserable. Sunday night, 7 p.m., 
you call 90% of people that have anxiety to go to work tomorrow. I always tell people, follow your passion. But then to get a setback and your passion, you know, yeah, I know you got a lot of passions, but football was one of them, but you didn't give up on it. You know, so how do you kind of tell someone to stick with their passion, but never quit? Yes, they want it. But how do people reset? Like, I know how to reset. Like, physically, I'm in great shape. Mentally, you can't touch me. You can't touch me. But how do you tell someone else who's not built like that? Because people ask me all the time. I wake up every day, 345, man. And I got two little kids at home. So I know you understand what it's like. Just like with growing, so, you know, kids at a young age, it's overwhelming. It's, it's challenging, man. Just like anything else. And then over time, your kids get older. They get become more independent. It gets easier. But how do you tell that person who doesn't want to get up and who wants to hit the snooze and they really want it, but they don't want it, but they know they want it, but they just can't figure it out. Like, well, how do you guide them? Because I believe everyone's got it to some degree in them. It's just how much you're willing to push. And look, this, I do fitness. This, this is what we do. We change people's lives. I've seen people that are literally lost a hundred pounds in six months and they wanted it, but they were never able to do it, but it just needed that push. So where do they go to find that? Yeah. Well, I think, it depends definitely on the person and what motivates them. But just speaking in general, I think one of the things that stick out to me is, you know, the thing that I told myself is like, it's going to be a day when I reach the end of my life, right? I'm a forward thinker when it comes to that. And what would the nine-year-old tell me? Like when I get to my deathbed, how many regrets am I going to have that I didn't do this, that I didn't do that? Like when it comes to even my fitness, the main reason that I work out, obviously for the health benefits, but I want to be active with my kids. I don't want to be 50 years old and can't go throw football with my son or my daughters playing whatever sports that they play. And so you have to have, as people call the why or the reason that is in the future. So what is that thing that's going to pull you, right? What is that magnet in the future that's going to pull you through all the hard times, all the struggle? Yes, it's easy to choose complaints. It's easy to choose settling. But when you have something that really pulls you through it, you will. The thing that I love most about, I can already tell you have it, and it's all in high level people that I'm around, like a common trait and it's emotional resilience, right? You got to build emotional resilience and emotional resilience is simply, you know, when the emotions come up of, I don't feel like it, or I'm tired, or this sucks, or it's not working out. You find a way to push through and ways that I build my emotional resilience is three things. Number one, and you just talked about it. I focus on the power in it, right? Yeah. I literally label everything power. You have a choice. This is the beautiful thing about life. You have a choice to create any meaning you want to something. So with football, I could easily say that at one point I did that my life is over, right? And I'm going to operate as if my life is over. Or it got to the point where I say, you know what? This is going to create something better for my life, right? That's a more empowering meaning that's going to give me the energy and the strength to keep going through it. A lot of us, we define things that are super disempowering and it just kills our energy. So number one, what you focus on is what you will feel, right? Control your means. Second thing about emotional resilience is you have to tell yourself emotions don't last. They don't. Like yeah. movement influences mood, right? You might not feel like waking up at 345, but if you get moving after 15 minutes, that is gone out your body, right? And yeah. the same thing with stuff and stuff like that. As you keep moving, emotions will change, right? You create the energy that you want to have in your life. And three, which is the main thing, is there's no other option. Like for me, giving up the rehab time, not being the greatest me, it's not even an option anymore. Like I always tell people, you know, people say don't throw in a towel. I don't bring a towel to throw in. Literally, there's no towel to throw in. There's no option to quit. And when you get to that point where you say, you know what? Okay, well, I'm here, so I can't turn back. I didn't burn the bridges, right? I didn't burn the boats. There's, then you got to find a way. You have to create a way. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So for me, even with leaving, I was even with really quitting football. I had to quit it. I had to let go. I was kept trying to pursue it. But once I burned that boat, once I burned that bridge, then I had to find my way. Okay, now I have to do it. And so when things become a have to for you, not a want to, not a wish to, but a have to for you, you will literally find the way. And I truly believe that. I love it. Listen, I want everyone right now to stop. I want you to rewind this and listen to this as much as you need to listen to it. Because what my man just said right now is so spot on. And that kind of leads into the next question. So when we started this, you know, and eventually I'm going to start doing these in person because I feel like it's just better with energy. But I said, Trent, let's do the video. I'm not going to show the video, but we got to vibe off the energy. Let's touch on that because I believe energy yeah. is everything. And that's how you close deals. That's how you make connections. That's how you build great relationships. Let's touch on energy. What are your thoughts on energy? 
I think energy is everything. And the thing about it is, you know, you can create the energy that you need. And that's the beautiful thing about And I mean, physical activity is one of the best things to do it. So before I ever do a video, before I ever do a call, before I ever speak on stage, like people see this, I will not speak on stage if I don't have a workout, if I don't go for a run, because I refuse to go into a situation not being the greatest version of myself. And so, I mean, it's like anything with power, right? Like a light is an awesome thing that illuminates the darkness, but without the power, right? Without plugging the light in, it doesn't have its full potential, right? It doesn't reach its full purpose. And so you have to come up with some type of formula to create the energy that you need in order to fulfill your dreams, in order to live the life that you want to have. And so morning rituals are very important, right? What you do in the morning is very important. And the energy around you too, like the people around you, your friends, you know, hopefully your family, like you got to make sure that everybody around you are not energy drainers, right? But they're energy creators, right? They generate the energy with you. They give you more energy. You vibe off them. They vibe off you. Once I change my circle with that, because I have people who are like energy vampires. So I'll go there and I'll just get sucked dry. I'm like, ah, this sucks. So I know some people might be like, well, at work, I go there, my energy gets sucked out. Find people, if you can, to really create the energy. Listen to this podcast, right? So if you know, when I go to work, at some period of time, my energy is going to drain, put on this podcast and be like, okay, this is how I get my energy back up. So I have these rituals in my day or these routines that I say in my day that really help me create energy in the morning, maintain energy uh, throughout the day. I love it, Trent. And listen, perfect example, because people think like I'm a robot. You know, some people, people tell me like, are you like a machine? Like you're not normal. I don't drink coffee. Look, this morning, I didn't go to bed last night until about 1230. It was impossible to get my oldest to bed. Impossible. Finally got him to sleep. He was in and out of his room a hundred times. Finally get to bed, but that doesn't matter. My clock goes off. I'm up. I got up, you know, took my shower, started my day. I was literally like so exhausted. Then I was training arms today. I did arms and cardio in the sauna. When I grabbed that bar, man, I got to tell you, it felt like 7 million pounds. But I pushed through it. After 15 minutes, I was already in, rocking and rolling. I had the best workout ever. That's why you just got to do it, no matter what, you know? And it's spot on right there, man. But let me ask you something, because this is like a really, really, really important question. And it's funny, because I say this all the time. You can never always listen to family, right? Now, I'm a big dreamer. Yeah. I know you're a big dreamer, right? I know that. I already see it. I know the kind of guy you are, right? Now, I had one of my family members the other day say to me, because I say crazy things, like I have my whole entire future mapped out in my mind. I know exactly where I'm going, what, what direction I'm turning, what I'm getting, where I'm living, everything, right? She said, Josh, you really shouldn't you know, speak like that because you know, these are just like dreams and you can't really bank on that. Now, I always say you can never take advice always from loved ones because sometimes they give you the wrong advice. So what are your thoughts on that? Because I know some people that have family members and obviously family's family. But you can't be surrounded around negativity, right? I take those negative signs and I slice them down the center. I make them a positive. So let's touch on that a little bit because I know a lot of people are really corrupted by their family telling them which way to go, what to do. And that's why I feel like the whole school system is all screwed up. Because personally, and I don't want to shift off off this question, but why don't they teach you about building relationships? Why don't they teach you about like how to have energy, have routines, you know? But let's back up. We can get to that next. But let's talk about family and advice because I know a lot of people, I get DMs on this all the time. When I do keynote speeches, people ask me about this all the time and they don't want to disappoint their parents. So let's touch on that a little bit. Yeah, that's an important subject, man. I get that a lot too. And I love to talk about this. One of the things that I've said in the past that that people you know, always hold on to is the quote that sometimes the people closest to you that support you at least. And it's fact. And the thing I want fact. people to understand that's listening to this, Josh, is that I know you want their support, but you don't need their support. I almost think it's the wrong people to go to first because they're close to you. And when someone is close to you, they're familiar with you, right? They know you. So just think about something. When you're familiar with something, it's like when you get a, a new car, right? Or something that you've had a long time, you normalize it. It becomes normal to you. And so the people around you, they're so close to you that they've normalized you that there's no way that this person can be that great. There's no way that you can achieve that. And what it is saying is saying more about them than it is about you, right? People will place their limitations on you. They will place their fears on you. They will place their impossibilities on you. You have to understand this fact. They couldn't do has nothing to do with what you can do. What they couldn't be has nothing to do with what you can be. We're just too great at people. I mean, we're just too good as people at taking advice from people, our family, who have not been successful at what we're trying to achieve. 
So when I had to dream of going to the NFL, obviously that was like, oh, only less than 1%. Teachers and luckily my immediate family, my dad, my mom, I have my uncle coaching in the NFL and he plays. So they were used to somebody close to them achieving that. So my immediate family was like, you know, you got to work hard, et cetera, bam, man, go for it. But my extended family, a lot of them was like, you sure? Like, make sure you have a plan B. And even when I started speaking, a lot of people, I mean, probably 99.9% of people was like, Trent, like, I don't think you should be a speaker because I'm an introverted person by nature. Like, my dad would tell you, if out of the three boys, he would bank on me not being a speaker out of my two older brothers. But the thing that I realized, and I'll leave it here, everybody who told me that I couldn't make it to the NFL or I was stupid to even dream, never been. Everybody who told me that I could not be a speaker or author, guess what? They were never a speaker or author. So go seek people who are at where you want to be. Because those are the people that are going to tell you, yeah, they're going to give you reality. It's going to be hard. You have to put in work, but you can do it. And so I know you want your family support. You don't need their, your family support. And think about this. One last thing. You think of any successful company, any successful whatever, I can guarantee you that 99% of their customer base or 99% of their supporters is made up of people that they don't know, right? In order to be successful, you're going to be supported by strangers. In <laughs> fact, even if all your family supports you, you still need strangers. So just know there's a world full of strangers that's waiting to support you. That will elevate you. So if your family jumps on, great. If they don't, then it has nothing to do with your success. Spot on, man. And listen, I want to share. So I tell a story all the time, but I want you to hear this because it, it really touches on what, you know, people are saying to you. So I got a holiday on August 1st. You just missed it. Maybe next year you and I can celebrate. I, it's For called sure. National Swiss Cheese sure. Day. All right. I go to the deli. I get a half a pound of Swiss cheese. I don't even eat it. I leave it on my desk and I FaceTime this one guy. And I tell him, I said, I do one of these, a little salute, happy National Swiss Cheese Day. So before I started Gym Guys, and I don't know if you've heard of us prior, Trent. I don't know. Have you heard of us before? Yes, I heard the name for sure. Okay, great. Well, yeah, right now we're the fastest growing fitness brand in the world. And we've literally done the impossible. We're disrupting the entire industry. But before I started Gym Guys, and I started out in my parents' dining room, I used to train a billionaire. Billionaire. I admired this guy so much. Trent, if you would have seen this guy shower, it was an aquarium. He had like fish from all over the world, like half a million dollars for a fish. I'm not even joking. And once a month, he would have like people in full blown out scuba gear clean it so it was clean. Crazy. And I was telling him about gym guys and he laughed at me and told me the business was like Swiss cheese. You got too many holes in it. You'll never succeed. Fast forward seven years later, I'm on the front page of the New York Times disrupting the fitness industry. He calls me up. There's like silence. And I was like, hello, his name's Bobby. And he's like, wow, I'm sorry. Very impressive. And then he's trying to invest in the company. But ever since then, every August 1st, I guess Swiss cheese. So that's why I always tell people, you choose your destiny. You can believe whatever you do, but you got to believe it if you want to achieve it. Because the more you obsess, the more obsessions you have, your obsessions become your possessions. You've got to obsess. I'm so obsessed. It's crazy, man. I tell people sometimes before they jump on a call with me, I tell them to grab a towel because my passion is going to be dripping all over your desk through the camera so you can wipe it down. That's how I roll. I love it, bro. That's how I roll. I so love listen, it. So that's something else because you hit it. I can't stand when people say plan B. Plan B? Listen, if you have a plan B, you're done. You're done. You got to go all in no matter what. Listen, I would literally cut off body limbs to know that we're going to be the largest fitness brand in the world in 15 to 20 years. And I tell people the chances of that not happening, you got a better chance to get hit by lightning like four or five times. So let's talk about plan B, what it means to you. Yeah, plan B, plan B means nothing to me, man. I'm the same way because I feel like if you have a plan B, you're planning to fail, right? You're planning for your plan A to fail, right? You don't have maximum confidence in it in yourself. If you don't have maximum confidence, then you are going to fail. And so I don't even think about a plan B. Like if something happens, you know, I'll cross that bridge when it gets there, but I made a choice in 2009 that I signed up forever for this. Like I signed on the dotted line to myself and say, you know what? I'm going to do this the rest of my life. I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to it. I don't know how I'm going to get to where I'm going to get to. When I first started, I said, I know I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. And again, like I said earlier, you literally will find a way. Because people's main excuse is, I don't have a way. I don't have an opportunity. I said, go create your opportunity. Well, somebody doesn't support me. Okay, well, be your own. Somebody doesn't believe me. Believe in yourself. Because yep. just to be in 100, I'm sure you can relate to this too. That people wasn't giving me opportunity. People wasn't bringing me in to speak. People wasn't asking me at the time to be on their podcast in 2009, even though it probably wasn't popular then. But people wasn't inviting me in the building, as I like to say. And so what I did was I could have used that as an excuse and went to a plan B. 
Or I can say, you know what, Trent? Build your own building. You know, that's what I did. I started from scratch, brick by brick, for the last decade and building this rehab time brand, right? And so, yeah, plan B, I think if you have a plan B, then you don't have 100% confidence in yourself. And if you don't have 100% confidence, I noticed this from sports, you're going to lose straight up. Spot on, man. It's a psychological game. People need to understand that. It's great. Look, I always say, when you're able to be an entrepreneur, that's great. But I always look at entrepreneurs who are in great shape in a totally different light because it takes a lot to be you know, physically fit. So those people have a different mindset. When I see an entrepreneur who's overweight, looks sloppy, and really not in shape, I'm going to beat him. And I'm going to win over him every single time because he doesn't have that mindset. And listen, man, Trent, you get me jacked up. Trent, you and I are going out to dinner one night, man. You get me all fired let's up. Let's do it. But listen, let's do it. Absolutely. So listen, two more questions. So what is something that people don't know about you? Like something that, you know, maybe is personal or whatever business. What is something that, you know, you can share? Yeah, man. I just share a struggle, man. Like I deal with, a lot of people don't know this. Like even, and I shared this on my last podcast that asked this, like a question similar. But like even with social anxiety, like it's crazy. And that basically was well, two things, social anxiety. And I don't know if you're familiar with imposter syndrome, right? I feel like I've dealt with that in the past, but really social anxiety. And I've always been, like I said, I'm an introverted person. People who know me know that like sometimes the quietest person in the room, not because I'm shy. It's just that I like to sit back and observe and then speak my piece when I speak my piece. But just being around groups of people, you know, those things give me anxiety, right? So the motivation in this for people listening to this, because a lot of what we're paralyzed by our fear and we said, oh, well, I can't do this because I have disability. I can't do this because of this. I tell people all the time, whatever you think your greatest disability is, turn it to your greatest ability. And so I move towards that. When I feel like I'm having some social anxiety, I move towards that feeling. I don't let that feeling conquer me. So I'm around thousands of people, you know, where I'm speaking on stages and meeting people and it's uncomfortable for me to be there. But the more that I put myself in those positions and not let fear control me, I've gained strength over and over yeah. and over again. And it starts to get more comfortable in me being in those positions. I love it, man. As I always say, you have to be able to be uncomfortable in order to get comfortable. You got to just do it. It's like, listen, when I give speeches too, I remember back in the day, I used to throw up, man. Literally, I would throw up before I go on TV or before I give a keynote. I'd have such anxiety. And now I do it like it's like clockwork, you know, it's just like anything else. What's really yeah. crazy you say this, and I can relate a little bit too, you know, most entrepreneurs are actually introverted. You know, people think I'm an extrovert. And yeah, when it comes to business, look, I'm all on every day. But like when I'm just with my family, I'm just kind of want to just sit back and not be involved as much because I'm always on all the time, you know, <laughs> and, you know, people don't get that. But people do need to understand that. But look, the last question we're going to hit you with is, you know, if you were conducting this interview, what is one question you would have asked? That's a great question, brother. Thank you. I always get everyone on this one, but you can take your time. We got patience. Yeah, yeah. Listen. You ask great questions. I'm trying to think like, if you ask like terrible questions, I'd be like, oh, that's easy. But you ask great questions already. I would say, how was I able to build, you know, a social, just a, just a social follower? Just, I mean, you can say social follower, just a, a brand or a company. Like, what was my, if I can choose one thing, what would that be? Well, let's go. What is it? Tell me. And this is the hard part. I want to choose a lot of things. But I'm going to say community. I'm going to say yeah. me caring for my community and my supporters is my serving secret. people serving people exactly bringing value to the world and when you understand how powerful bringing value is to people you will continue to do it it become contagious because bringing value will open up doors that no talent you know whatever can open up go serving people whether it's somebody who's you know that you look up to go bring value to that person instead of asking that person to do you a favor or go bring value instead of asking someone to buy something from you just go bring value and bring it from the heart and value opens up doors that literally will change your company, will change your life. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, Trent, you gave so many nuggets. People are going to love this podcast. Listen, where can people find you, man? I, I, most people really know where you are, but where can they find you? Tell me. Yeah. So TrentShelton.com is the website. Social media is just at Trent Shelton. Uh, you just put that Trent Shelton, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I'll pop up, man. Awesome. Well, Trent, thank you again so much for bringing so much value. You really served a lot of people today. So I really appreciate that, man, from the bottom of my heart. Until next time, guys, fuel your drive. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast, Fuel Your Drive. Please be sure to subscribe and leave a review. I'd really appreciate it. 
And also, make sure you follow Gym Guys on Instagram. And of course, myself, Josh York GG. We're going to change the world. And we want to help you along the journey.